Happy Thursday. I want to talk to you today about the Garden of Eden in your life. How many of you know that the Bible tells us that we're supposed to have the Garden of Eden, days of heaven upon the earth? I'm going to explain to you how that works. Say this with me on this happy Thursday. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart and getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Everything always works out for me. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. We're in a little different setting today because I can't do these at home today because we have a house full of people. And uh, I don't want to wake them up. They're now part of my entourage. They're all sleeping. My entourage needs their rest. So they're going to sleep, and I come down here to the church. Our church is only a mile away from our house. So I come down here. Isn't this beautiful? Look at this church. Look at this church. Isn't this absolutely beautiful? The Lord has blessed us so much. So much. Sunday, we had a whole church full of people. Wonderful time. We have such a wonderful church family here. This is so nice. Glory to God, huh? Share this video with everybody you know. I want everybody to be blessed. Amen? And when you do your offerings and donations today, make sure you call me so that I can speak the blessing over you. I want to read something uh, for you. And this is found in Isaiah 51.3. It says, For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. The blessing brought the Garden of Eden like conditions into the lives of people. Now, we know that the Garden of Eden, the actual garden, is no more. But God's purpose for the blessing, when he blessed Adam and his wife, he said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and have dominion. He intended for Adam and Eve to tend the garden and for their descendants to, to tend the garden that was to expand over the entire earth. God planted a garden east of Eden, and there is where he put his man and woman, in the garden. And I don't know where God got the seeds. I don't know how he planted it. I don't know if the garden just grew immediately, or if it grew over time. But it says the Lord God planted it. If he planted it, chances are he planted it with seeds. Everything is seed time and harvest. And it's, that's the way it is for us. And if it's that way for us, it's probably that way for God too. Now, the growing season may have been accelerated. We don't know these things. So don't pay any attention to anybody who speculates. I'll tell you right now, I don't know how it happened. I don't. But I'm guessing, and I'm going to ask the Lord about this. Where did the seeds come from to plant the garden? Because they had to come from someplace. They had to come from someplace. I believe the Lord brought the seeds from heaven. Now, that's just what I think. But I don't know. So don't quote me on that. Don't say, well, Pastor Jim says the Lord brought seeds with him from heaven. No, don't say that because I don't know. I'm guessing. If I tell you I'm guessing about something, I'm guessing about something. You may have a different idea. I don't know. Your idea is probably as good as mine. But the seeds had to come from someplace. And the garden, and the garden then with all these fruit trees... As the fruit drops and as the birds carry the seeds and drop the seeds, like 
That's what birds do. They they drop the seeds all over the place. That's why you see a fruit tree here and maybe a mile away, you'll see another one exactly like it. And they can do tests on it. They can find those two trees are related. The reason is because the birds carry the seeds. So the birds could have carried the seeds. The Garden of Eden could have very easily expanded. And as the number of birds increases and the number of seeds and trees increase, the garden could have easily expanded over the whole earth in a, probably a fairly short time. I don't know. But that's what God intended. He intended for the entire earth to be covered with the Garden of Eden and for all of us to live there. But Adam sinned. And when he did, he brought in the curse of the earth. And God told Adam, he says, the earth is cursed because of you. Thistles and thorns shall be in it. And that's how you'll make your living through the thistles and thorns. Now, you got to ask yourself, who wore a crown of thorns when they went to the cross? Jesus did. Jesus redeemed us from the curse. And part of the curse was a hard life making our living through thistles and thorns. And Jesus wore the thorns. He took upon himself the thorns. Therefore, we are redeemed from the hard life. We can actually live in the garden, in our own garden. God's purpose for the blessing to create the Garden of Eden has never changed. How many of you know that God's purpose for something never changes? If God has a purpose for your life, it will never change. God had a purpose for my life from the time I was very, very young. I knew that I was supposed to be a minister. I knew I was supposed to be a preacher. I knew I was supposed to have a church. I knew I was supposed to be a priest. I even told my mother that I wanted to be a priest. She said, oh, you're not going to be a priest. Well, all I wanted to do was serve the Lord. Now, I got away from all that, but I came back to it. Because God never stopped drawing me. He never stopped drawing me to his purpose. And I believe that right now, what I'm doing is God's purpose for my life. Because I'm content. I, I was never content. In my whole life, I was never content doing anything else. And I was a great salesperson and I had sales forces and I ran sales organizations and I was manager in car companies and all kinds of stuff and run all kinds of programs. But I was never content. Not like I am now. Because now I feel inside my spirit that I'm fulfilling God's purpose for my life. Now, God's purpose for my life could change. I started out as an evangelist. Now I'm a pastor. Everybody in Bible college was shocked when I declared my major as pastoral studies. They said, whoa, you're not gonna be an evangelist? I said, yes, I'll always be an evangelist, but I believe God wants me to be a pastor. And so here I am. And, when I got a hold of the blessing, the Garden of Eden began to grow in our lives. We lived in a little house over uh, across the river on Elizabeth Street. And we had our church at the time in the house. We had given up our church and uh, taken a long sabbatical and, and people just didn't want to go to church anywhere else. So we said, we'll come to the house. Well, they did in droves. So somebody found us. Uh, a church with a house attached to it. And so we moved into there, belonged to a rock star. And so we negotiated with him and we moved into that. And <clears throat> I met him and talked music with him. And great, great man, very nice. And so we lived there for a while and then he sold the property. But even in that little rental house over on Elizabeth Street, on the other side of the river, over in Melbourne, 
the Garden of Eden began to grow and things began to change. We started to accumulate money. Once we got a hold of the blessing, we had never accumulated any money and we accumulated $20,000. And so we took our $20,000 and that rock star's property, we got it ready uh, to live there and we got the church all fixed up. The church had been abandoned. It took our, we had to replace the air conditioners and everything. It took $20,000 to get that place set up. But we did it. We got it all set up. And it took exactly, the, when we had our first service, the first service we had, our checkbook was absolutely empty. We had no money left. I mean, we were down to just $100. Down from $20,000. But we had the Garden of Eden. And this grew, and that property increased, and everybody was blessed, including the rock star. And he got blessed, and he sold his property for a lot more than he paid for it. Praise God. But we lost our place. Then we shared a church for a few months, and then the Lord gave us this place. And this place is wonderful. It sits right out on A1A, the main road out here. And eventually, we got our home and our home is really has become a showcase. It looks so beautiful. It's the most beautiful home in the whole area over there. Beautiful rock gardens and flowers and lights. And it's our own Garden of Eden. And when you get a hold of the blessing, the Garden of Eden will grow up around you. Now, Kenneth Copeland got a hold of this blessing years ago. And he lives in his own Garden of Eden down there in Dallas, Fort Worth area. I've never been there, but I know people who have. And it's beautiful. And it grows. It grows. His Garden of Eden grows every year. And when you get a hold of this blessing, your Garden of Eden, your own personal Garden of Eden will grow the way it's supposed to. You're supposed to live in your own Garden of Eden. And the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. I never make any apologies. I'm not the least bit embarrassed about having more money than I need because this is the blessing of the Lord. And I tell everybody, it's from the Lord. people say to me, what happened? What happened to you? What is so different? What did you do? What? They think I inherited a bunch of money or won the lottery. Well, I won the lottery when I got the blessing, folks. I got a hold of the blessing and my whole life changed just like a lot of people. I got notes from people. There's notes, where are they? Oh, I don't have it right here right now, but it's not on this one. But somebody wrote me a letter and they said, Pastor Jim, when you blessed us, our whole lives changed. Everything changed. I say, praise God. That's the way it's supposed to work. If you haven't gotten a hold of this blessing yet, hang on because I'm going to make sure you get it. Do not quit. Stay with it. The blessing will come upon you. We'll get the curse gone. The curse will be gone. Once the curse is gone, the blessing will come in. So just relax. I tell people this, once I break the curse and speak the blessing over you, just relax and enjoy your life. Those are the people that get it. The people that keeps going, why is it, why don't I have it? Why don't I have it? They're the ones that seem to take a long time, but not the people who just enjoy their life. Tell everybody you know about this video. I want all of you to live in the Garden of Eden blessing, the way you're supposed to live. To have your own Garden of Eden literally grow up around you and people will say, what happened to you? And we have some people from Michigan got a hold of the blessing. People would walk up to the guy and say, what happened? He'd tell them about Jesus. He got a lot of people saved that way. You can do the same thing. Once the blessing comes upon you, people will notice. One of our partners is so blessed, people thought she was up to something crooked. They couldn't believe that she increased so fast. Glory to God. Call me today when you do your offerings and donations. And call me today when you need your prayers answered. I am always here for my partners and God will bless you.